Luke 18, 19. Oh, yeah. Why do you call me good? There's none good but God alone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The same one that's found in Mark 10, 17, 18. And the same one that's found in Matthew 19, 16, 17. Now, after I'm done with answering these questions, I want you to go to my YouTube channel. You're going to use a search engine. You put in Trinity or any topic, Jesus, God. I have dozens of YouTube teachings and articles that answer this. I've answered this 10 million times. I'm going to answer it again for you. Okay. Notice what we did again. Notice that we took a verse in the middle of the gospel of Luke, Luke 18, 19, and ignored the previous 17 chapters to see what Jesus said and taught so we can understand what this verse means and doesn't mean, right? Yes. Okay, but now I'm going to first use Luke 18, 18 to 30. We're going to read Luke 18, 18 to 30, right? Let's going to read it. Okay, let's start. Now I'm going to have you explain to me what Jesus meant because he can mean one of two things. Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone, meaning, hey, don't call me good. Or he can be doing something much deeper. There's two ways because to interpret it. Jesus said that he, he is the Lord. So, I mean, because he is the Lord, so it refers to him as well. Yeah. And I'm going to prove it, though, because they're going to say prove it. Okay, I'm going to prove it to you slowly. But let's take it slowly because I got to read the Bible for you. So okay. when Jesus says, why do you call me good? There's none good but God alone. It can mean one of two things. It's like me saying, hey, bro, why are you call me good? Only God is good. Now, you know what I mean. I'm a creature. I'm not good. Only God is absolutely good, okay? But if Jesus is yeah. not a creature, and he's already showed us in the previous chapters, he's not a creature, but he's the son of God who's equal to the Father in nature and glory, then he's not saying I'm not good. What he's saying is, why do you call me good? Do you understand what that implies? None is good but God alone. Therefore, if I'm good, what does that make me? If there's no one who is good except God, and if I am good, like you say, what does that make me? God. Okay, now let's see which understanding fits the context. Now let's read it. Okay, Luke 18, 18 to 30. Are you ready? Yes. And a ruler asked him, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. Now watch. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. That means don't sin against your neighbor. If you love your neighbor as yourself, then you won't do these things against your neighbor. I won't commit adultery because I don't want someone to commit adultery with my wife, right? Yes. Do not kill. Just like I don't want someone to kill me, and I won't want to kill my because love your neighbor as yourself. Do not steal. I don't want someone to steal from me. I won't steal from my neighbor. Do not bear false witness. I don't want someone to lie about me, so I won't lie about them. Honor your father and mother. Notice he gives him the commands that talks about how to love your neighbor, right? Yes. That's the last six of the Ten Commandments. If you read, because he's quoting the Ten Commandments. The first four the is... Gentiles. Say it again. The Ten, command, the ten Commandments yes. for the Gentiles. No, well... The Ten Commandments of everyone, Jews or Gentiles, but focus on this. He quotes the last six commandments, how to love your neighbor. The first four is how to love God. If I love God, I won't have idols, right? But he didn't quote the first four, right? Yes. You know, you'll see why. And so the rich man responded, all these I've observed from my youth. I've done this since I was a child. And when Jesus heard it, he said to him, one thing you still lack, sell all that you have. Your money, because he's very rich, and he loved his money, and he's attached to his money. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. You see what Jesus is saying? Your money is hindering you because you love your money more than anything. It's become an idol, right? Like people are taking money as God? Yes. His money has become his God because his money governs his life, and he's living for his money. So what did the first four commandments say? You'll have no other God besides me, right? If you love me as your God, you're not going to have any other God besides me. So even money, you won't put money before me, right? Yeah, we should not. So what did Jesus say? Give up your money, give it to the poor, have treasure in heaven, and follow me. So how do you love God more than your money? Follow Jesus. Give it all up for me. Do you hear what he said? Yeah. Give up your money and follow me. How come he didn't say give up your money and follow God? That's like more virtuous than Muhammad. Like he says, give the money to the prophet and to his companions. Yeah. And, but it, b besides the issue of virtue, why did Jesus say, give up your money, give it to the poor and follow God? Because your money is becoming an idol and your money is hindering you between, putting a obstacle between you and God. He says, give up your money for me and follow me. But this was an idol between him and God. His money had become his God.
become an idol that hindered him from loving God more than anything. So why didn't he say, give up your money and follow God because your money has become an idol between you and God. He said, no, give up your money and follow me. Why do you say that? Like he's trying to prove that he's the God. Uh -huh. When you give up your money, which you love more than anything for me, that means you love me more than anything. And you're supposed to love me more than anything. But hold on, Jesus. You're supposed to love God more than anything. Yes. But now let's finish it. But when he heard this, he became sad for he was very rich. No. See, Jesus now said, see, you're lying. You don't think I'm good. Why? Because if you thought I was good and only God is good, then that means I'm God. Because if only God is good and you think I'm good, then I'm God. Well, if I'm God, then give up everything for me. So he just proved that he's a hypocrite because he didn't give up everything for Jesus. He loved his money more than Jesus. So that means you're a liar. You don't think I'm good. So notice the logic. Only God is good. So you're saying I'm good? That means I'm God. Well, if you really believe I'm good, then you got to believe I'm God. And if I'm God, you got to love me more than anything, more than your money, and be willing to give up your money for me. And that he did not do because Jesus was exposing his heart. You don't believe what you're saying about me. You're a hypocrite. See it? So Jesus was saying this to that man who said that he's a good teacher. Yep, that's what that's what he's saying. Because notice what he said. Why do you, you call me good? In context, this is what it, it means. Right? Yeah, right here. He said, give up your money, which is an idol. Follow me. Now, let me finish it. Though. But when he heard this, he became sad for he was very rich. Jesus looking at him said, how hard is it for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God? Because they love their money more than God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard it said, then who can be saved? Now, notice. Look what he said. If it's like this, no one can be saved, Jesus. Now watch Jesus' answer, please. But he said, what is impossible with men is possible with God. Now you understand what Jesus said? Jesus said, no human being can save himself. That's something humanly impossible, right? Only God can do that, correct? Yes. But then the same gospel, Luke, Jesus says he comes to save people. How can he save people if only God can save people? And it's impossible for a man to save himself. Here, let me read it. Luke 19, 10. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. I, the Son of Man, came to save the lost. But wait, hold on. Let's reread it again. Luke 18, 26, 27. Those who heard it said, then who can be saved? But he, Jesus said, what is impossible with men is possible with God. Yes, it's humanly impossible to save yourself. Only God can do it. But then Luke 19, 10, Jesus, the Son of Man says, I come to save that which is lost. But Jesus, you just said, it's humanly impossible to save anyone. Only God can do it. And yet you're saying, what? you came to save people. Yeah, because I'm the God who does the impossible. Did you catch it's it now? The right now? What? So the verses are connecting. Yes. So connecting. Oh, yeah, I'm going to give you more connection. But let me finish now. And Peter said, lo, watch. What did he tell the rich man? Give up your money for me. Look what Peter says. Luke 18, 20 to 30. Same chapter, by the way. And Peter said, lo. We have left our homes and followed you. Okay, we gave up everything for you. The rich man didn't do it, but we did it. Now watch what Jesus said. And he said to them, truly I say to you, there is no man who has left house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the King God who will not receive manifold more in this time and the age to come eternal life. So he said, you gave up everything for me because I'm the king who brings the kingdom. Now I swear to give you eternal life. Are you catching that? Yeah, it's the promise that God makes. Okay, yes, and yet Jesus makes it. Now, again, remember what you said. What is impossible for men to do, save one another? Only God can do that, right? Yes. Okay, but now watch what the angel says about Jesus. Luke 2, 11. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. So the angels announce Christ is the Savior. And Jesus says, I'm the Son of Man who comes to save the lost. Something that no human being can do, but only God can do. So notice Jesus Christ is Lord. He's Rab, and he's the Savior. But then in Luke 18, 26, 27, Jesus said, no human being can save one another because that's impossible for man to do. Only God can do it. And yet the angels say, Jesus is the Christ and he is Rab, He is Lord who comes to save because he's the Savior. And then Jesus said himself in Luke 19, 10, I, the Son of Man, came to save that which is lost. So how come Jesus does what is humanly impossible? Does what only God can do, save, if he is not absolutely good? Okay, so Jesus, so, so like a lot of Muslims, like 
put this claim that Jesus did not say himself God, but he actually said, like just you just proved that, that he actually claimed himself as being God. Of course, because if Jesus does what only God can do, I just read it to you, Luke 18, 26, 27. It is impossible for humans to be saved on their own. No man can save himself, let alone someone else. That's impossible. But God can do that impossible work because God alone has the power to save people. And then Jesus then says, I, the son of man, have come to save that which is lost. I save the lost. And the angels say of Jesus, he is Christ, the Lord, the Savior.